My name is Emily Brockley Hoffler, and today I am here to show you how to make art from nature. So we've collected some things in the forest that we will share with you. So the first thing I do when I'm looking for supplies is I try to find things that are already down. So in my forest, people have been collecting up branches. So you can see there's bark here. That would be good to collect. Um, there's these nice pine needles. Those would be good. Um, there's cedar. So things that are already on the ground, those are sort of the best things to collect. Don't peel bark off a living tree. Um, if you can find, you know, small sticks and things that are already on the ground, that's ideal. So we're out here foraging today. And yep. what do we always say? Don't pick the first and don't, don't pick, pick the, the last. last. That's right. So on top of things you found in nature, you will definitely need glue. You could use a paintbrush or you could use a popsicle stick. Other things that you might want are paint to do your background. And we also got these googly eyes. So some of the things we've collected are cedar, moss. We have some small rocks, pieces of birch bark, uh, wood that kind of falls apart. We've got dried flowers, a stick, and also, we have some leather scraps. Those might be useful. Hey, that makes purple. Yeah. You can make purple. And we have birch bark. And we're using some paint for the background. And these are my sons. Oh, Hello. hi. Christian and Victor. And they are going to help me with this demonstration. So right now, they are working on the background. And what, what are you guys going to make today? Hmm. Whiskey Jack. Whiskey Jack? Yeah. I'm gonna make Whiskey Jack, but a polar bear. Okay. I'm making Whiskey Jack because he's w more interesting. Yeah? So we're working on creating art inspired by some of our favorite stories. And in the Algonquin culture, we have a lot of really interesting, magical or trickster characters like Whiskey Jack. We also have Bigfoot. And hey, we were searching for Bigfoot. Yeah, and we also have water spirits and other sorts of spirits that live in the forest. And we and we also found Bigfoot. You did. And they're and they're prints. They're like oh. giant. All right, so we're gonna get going. So if you found some birch bark, I think we've said it a couple times, and I'm gonna keep saying it. Please don't pull birch mm -hmm. bark off the tree. If you find birch bark that's already on the ground, you can peel off the bark. Or if you find bark that's on the ground, that's great to use also. Mm -hmm. Now for this project, um, I'm gonna peel back some of the layers of the bark. This means that more people can use it. And it's also the way that we would make paper, birch bark paper, that we would use for birch bark biting. And we would also cut out shapes uh, to make patterns. So this piece is quite dry. So when you're peeling it back, it you want to go... You made green? Yeah, made green. Awesome. You need to... Are you ready to add some natural elements to yours? Yep. I'm ready to put some barks. Okay, hold on. I'm going to peel some bark for you. Wood. So when you're peeling your bark, you want to do it really slowly so that it comes apart in sheets like this. Now, if you're ready for the wood, Hold on, Ella. hold on. What I'm going to do is hey. where do you want to put your glue down? So where do you want to put your wood? Like all on this All on that part? All on the wooden. All on this part here? Yep. Okay, so I'm going to put this here for you. Okay, and then you can use this paintbrush and you just smooth it around. We actually got materials from uh, our cultural center, the cultural center at Kittikan CB. And in it, there were stories about Bigfoot. <gasps> and you were pretty excited when you heard that Bigfoot was I, real. I was excited. Hey, those should... are really fun stories. Yeah, you could just mix it I don't around. know how to draw Bigfoot, so I'm just going to draw Well, Bigfoot. you can make the Bigfoot from the bark, or you could use the oh, yeah. cedar. I'm going to use the bark. Okay. Why is there bark in this? Do you want a Bigfoot? Yeah, we need Bigfoot. 
Right. Because see all this birch? We're going to have to put eyes. Googly eyes. So. Yeah, you want some googly eyes? So we do have a few things not found in nature, including googly eyes, because yeah. they're fun. Yeah, and they're but, silly. They're like, yeah, go, 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 go. So I can hear a look. I've made you a nice big foot. Oh, I that. to make everything look small so it looks big, right? Yeah, it looks like a big foot. Yeah, did you, what did you have? Big feet? Yep. He has Okay, big. where do you want to glue him down? Over beside oh. the uh, so. over beside when he's like jump. Right here. Okay, yeah, you can stick him down. Nice. Wait, where's the googly eyes? Okay, you want some googly eyes? I think you're almost done, so let's add your googly eyes. I'm not even done. Okay, so there's blue, green, yellow, red. red. You want red? Yeah, we need we need a, two reds. Then Bigfoot has two eyes, so we need two eyeballs of red. But there could be Cyclops, Bigfoot. No, there could be Cyclops. He has a bunch of eyes Are you over his body. Eyes? Yes, I do. Okay. What oh. color googly eyes do you want? Green. There you go. Okay, green. Where are you going to put them? I, I, can, I need to put dots. I know, but where are you going to put the eyeballs? Right, right there? Backlog. 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 I Now, for the rocks, if you have hot glue, hot glue will probably work better. But if you don't have hot glue, you can use a large dollop of glue. Like that. Like that. And then just let it sit until it's completely dry. Yeah. And especially if you're using something like Mod Podge, it will hold it on a little bit better. Yeah. Well, and let that skit. And don't worry if it looks gluey. The glue will dry clear, so you're not going to see the glue. Okay, afterwards. okay. So now I am going to do another wood panel, um, but you could use canvas, you could use like a thick cardstock, whatever kind of paper you have. Um, I still have things that we've collected from outside, so I've got some cedar, some moss, uh, some leaves birch bark stick. I've got some pebbles and I'm also using some leather scraps left over from other work and some non-natural products. Uh, I've got some googly eyes. Those might be fun to use and I've also got some craft beads so those might be fun to add as well. And this is wood and when it gets really dry, it sort of crumbles up, and I thought that might be useful um, if I'm going to do some soil on the ground. And when you're working with birch bark, make sure that you just keep saving all the little extra pieces. I save all of my extra birch bark um, so that I can use it in other um, artworks. Algonquin people use birch bark for basket making, for canoe making. Um, and we also use it to make patterns, birch bark biting. So we would fold it and then bite it to help make a pattern. And then uh, we would also cut out little pieces to make stencils. So I'm gonna use those on this piece as well. And again, you can use any kind of glue. If you're gonna be gluing things like rocks, probably a heavier glue. Um, if you have an adult who can help you, um, you could use hot glue. I'm probably going to use the Mod Podge today because um, it's pretty good. Just make sure that everything's fully dry before you move your piece. So, so I'm going to use the Mod Podge. You can squeeze it on. Uh, you could use a uh, brush or you could use a popsicle stick, whatever you have to spread your glue. You could use a regular stick too. Um, so I'm going to just put down some Mod Podge because I'm going to add my cedar first. I'm just going to spread it around and you want it kind of thick so that it will glue and hold on to whatever you're sticking down. So I'm going to use cedar for this character. I might also glue some on the back actually. That might be better. Here we go. And I 
think what's interesting for me learning about these uh, creatures and spirits is that I'm starting to see sort of a resurgence uh, of these characters like uh, Wendigo or uh, the Whiskey Jack. I think it's fun to use our own sort of magical, powerful spirits and creatures. So I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna add some other stuff down here. So I think I'm gonna do some glue and then I'm going to sort of spread it out. And here I'm gonna add the wood. And I'm gonna add this little cutout. And the way I did this was when you have your birch bark, it can be pulled apart into these little tiny sheets of paper. So that's how I made this. So I did a little sheet of paper and then I drew the design on the back of the birch bark and then I cut it out using scissors. So I'm gonna glue that there. So you can see flat things are gonna be easier to attach. Something with more texture like the um, cedar will take longer to dry and you're probably gonna need a lot more glue. And then I'm gonna take my wood. And if you use your fingers, you can kind of rub it together. So when this dries, what I'll do is I will tap it off and I'll save the excess. Whatever falls off, I'm gonna save it and then I could use it for another project. I like to try to make sure that I don't let anything that I've foraged go to waste. So I'll, I'll save it um, to make sure that everything gets used. And if there's natural elements that I, I haven't used and it doesn't have anything like glue or paint on it, I can always return it to the forest. That's okay too. So now I'm gonna create a birch tree. So I cut some of the birch bark into these little strips and I'm gonna just make a line of glue here and then I'm gonna glue down my birch pieces. And this is a fun way to use birch that the outer, outer part doesn't always get used um, if you're making baskets often it's the inner bark that gets used so I thought this is sort of a great way to to use those outer pieces that might not be used for birch bark biting or basket making make sure you have enough glue that it sticks down but you don't actually need to too much because this is pretty light there we go and I can just trim off that piece at the top and then I'm gonna glue the white parts, the outer white birch pieces to cover up some of the inner bark. And I think that I like this little piece here. It's got a nice natural edge. Now I think I'm going to glue, I made this little biting. It's sort of like the sun. You can see the circle in the center there. So I think I'm going to glue that at the top. Get that little drop there. All right. Okay. Now I'm going to tap this off and that will also let me see 
if my so you can see quite a lot came off there and I can also see where the cedar is not quite gluing on so I'm going to save those little pieces that I tapped off because I can use them again could also cut out from the birch bark if I wanted to make a natural eye. I'm gonna I'm gonna use the googly eyes just because I think they're they're kind of fun and I feel like this character would be a lot of fun. Maybe I'll give him a little hat. Sometimes they'll have these little extra pieces of leather so they're good to save. You can always ask if you know anyone who might have little extra pieces. I'll also use small pieces like this to make little tiny beadwork pieces so that nothing gets nothing gets wasted. Okay, so we'll just take those off. And then I think I'm almost done. I think that's a fun little Bigfoot character. I feel like he's hiding in the cedar so we don't see him. Maybe I would glue another branch. And then if I was gonna glue these on, I think I will probably use hot glue. You could do quite like a large blob of regular glue and then just leave them on and let them really, really dry before you move them. And if there's any kind of sort of dirt on the back of your leaves. Just remove that before you glue it down because it will make it glue a little bit better. This one's a little bit dusty on the back. See, I've glued down the bigger ones and I've left the smaller ones kind of loose because that will give it some dimension. There we go. And then I could maybe add some, some moss if I wanted to, but that that is it. So thank you so much for joining us. We hope that you had a great time making art from things that you found in nature. We've all done our own version of the Masaba, the Sabe or Bigfoot giant. Um, I can't wait to see what you've created. Please use the hashtag art from nature so that I can see what you've done. And I can't wait to see everybody's art projects. Have a great day. Bye. All right, so I hope everyone enjoyed the tutorial. I'm going to take some time now to answer some questions. If I don't have time to get to everyone's questions, I will do my very best to respond in the comments to any questions that I missed. So the first question I have is what inspired you to start exploring art? And I have wanted to be an artist my pretty much my whole life. My parents said by the time I was two or three, I was talking about being an artist. And I think part of it is because I come from a really creative family, artistic family. Um, my dad is an artist. My mom makes amazing clothes and ribbon wear. Um, I have aunts and uncles and grandparents who are artists, writers, 
creative people, making music. And so I think just being exposed to art and knowing that it was possible to have a creative life um, really sort of brought me in that direction. Uh, what type of art do you create and what mediums do you work with? Uh, so I am a mixed media artist. I also do photography, um, but most recently I have been doing mixed media work and then also some murals um, with my family. So these are some examples of work that I've been doing recently. Um, this piece is uh, Water Spirits. It is made from beadwork, including natural elements like stones and crystals, and then painted. Um, this is another piece that I did. It's a study of the night sky. So it's the North Star with some other stars, and I've included abalone and quills, porcupine quills. I've been trying to do pieces that use more natural elements, traditional elements, um, at the encouragement of Elder Annie Smith St. George. And the last piece I'll show you is a loomed beaded um, piece and the background is with birch bark. Um, I use a lot of birch bark in my pieces whenever I can. It is something that Algonquin people have been using for, um, you know, since time immemorial to do baskets and canoes and bitings and cut out patterns. It's a well of tree, you can make syrup. Um, so I do like to try to include it when I can in um, whatever I'm working on. Who first taught you this art form? Um, I think I've had many teachers in my life. I've had many teachers teaching me how to do beadwork, whether they were family members or through classes that I've taken. I've been studying art um, since elementary school, at different art schools, um, and then also because I do have a family of artists, I am very lucky that I'm able to learn from them. I've been doing painting with my dad, and I do uh, sewing with my mom, and then also now I do a lot of work with my uh, sisters, Mari and Claire Bracape. Uh, so just, I learn from everyone I can. I believe that we need to learn our whole lives. So I'm always excited to learn new things. Can you share an interesting place where we may find your art? Um, I think I'm very fortunate that there are a few places around Ottawa um, where I'm lucky to have my art being shown in a permanent way. I think the first, um, example that I can think of is the Mamawi piece at Pimacy Station, La Breton Flats. It's an LRT station in Ottawa. There is a large uh, canoe of over a hundred paddles. Um, one of my paddles is there and we worked with over a hundred Algonquin artists. I was selected by the city of Ottawa to be a mentee um, at that station and it was a great way to get introduced to making public art and finding out, you know, how to write proposals and sort of prepare myself for a public art life. So that was a great um, opportunity for me. And then also in May of 2022, I unveiled a piece of art that I was commissioned to create for the National Art Center in Ottawa. You can find that piece in their lobby off the canal entrance. It is a large uh, visual mixed media piece I'm really proud of. It is a visual land acknowledgement and a celebration of the great Algonquin nation. So if you're at the National Art Center, please go and take a look. And the third piece I can think of is a large mural that I created with my sisters, Claire and Mari, and my dad, Simon. It is at Assumption School in Vanier, um, which is a neighborhood in Ottawa. We made a large seven grandfather mural. It is painted on large metal discs and installed outside that school. Um, it's a really exciting piece, I think. Um, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Uh, so if you're in the area, please check it out. I do also have pictures um, on my website.
or if you Google me, you'll find me and you can see uh, those pieces. What role do you think art plays in preserving Indigenous cultures? I think art has a long history of preserving culture. When we find, you know, birch bark baskets or um, other, you know, artifacts <laughs> created by our ancestors, it tells a story, it tells us something about the culture at that time. Um, so I think it's a great way to preserve uh, culture, tradition, history. Um, and also what I love about art and especially visual art is it doesn't speak any language. It speaks every language. So everybody who looks at it has an opportunity to learn something and take something away from it. Um, when I'm creating art, I really try to include a storytelling element. Um, I'm trying to include culture, teachings from elders, history, stories from my family um, as a way to continue to preserve, um, you know, individual history, community history. And I will take one more question. I think this is a good one. Um, how do I become an artist or how do I pursue a creative life? I think if you feel inspired to be an artist, um, whether it's a visual artist, an animator, a graphic designer, um, I think everyone has an important voice. And I would just encourage you to take as many classes as you can. You can find so many free tutorials online Summer Solstice Indigenous Festival. Go on their YouTube. They've got awesome uh, courses available uh, by other artists, all different kinds of artists. And I think it's a great place to start. Um, you know, there's opportunities in school or university or college to take art classes. And I think even reaching out to artists who might be doing mentorship opportunities, it's a great way to learn something new and learn from an artist. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot on the art side. So learning how to make the art, but when you want to be an artist, a working artist, you also need to learn, um, I guess I'll call it the business side. Uh, so writing proposals, um, finding calls uh, for proposals online. But I think, you know, the first step is figuring out what kind of art you want to make, what kind of art inspires you, um, and then doing everything you can to learn how to do that, find your voice as an artist. And then as you grow up and as you get older, finding ways to sell your art, to promote your art. Um, so I would just encourage anyone who wants to be an artist, you can do it. Um, you know, just live your best creative life. Thank you so much for joining me. Like I said, if I didn't get to your question, I will do my very best to answer all the questions in the comments. Thank you so much. Chi miigwech. See you next time.